Radio.com to be here and also to see my Facebook Live family. You know what we do. Like, share, and tag your friends and let them know that the Choir Director Academy is on the air. We're so glad to be here. We show choir directing from a different perspective. And we're mentoring the people who are coming behind so that we can have some great directors coming up the line and be able to take on the mantle when we decide to retire. Yeah, one day I really will retire from this job, but I love it. So do me a favor. Thank you to all of those who are out in intellectual, intellectual radio land. Thank you for joining us on tonight. But Facebook, you've been with me from the beginning. You know what we do. Like, share, let's get the word out that we are on the air. want to give a shout out to uh, everybody that is out there with us on tonight. We know it's a cold winter night, but everybody, I thank you for tuning in and joining in with me and not letting me be by myself. That is a beautiful thing. Um, I, I was thinking about this subject and it's kind of different. I realize that it's kind of different. And sometimes people don't necessarily think that there's a lot going on behind uh, the music. They just hear it. You know, you come up with a bump, you come up with a song, you come up with the music and then we just go from there. But it's a whole lot going on behind that. We don't want to get too technical because <laughs> then you kind of lose everybody. I want to give a couple of shout outs. I see Annette on here. She has the mind, body and soul. Thank you for watching and sharing. My mom is out here. Ovita is out here watching. And then I have other people there as well. Can't see your name. So I need you to make a comment so I can give a shout out to you. Um, choir, I, we all, we're talking about choir directors. And that's what gave me the idea for this show because um, a lot of times we are not considered, we're not really given the credit that we're, that's due. And especially church choir directors, that, that's one of the main things, reasons why I got started, because we don't have, we don't have the support system like everybody else. I mean, we're considered, technically, we're considered like the bottom of the food chain. You got the show choirs, which are doing the Broadway musicals and all of that. Then you have the community choirs, which are the ones we see on the Stellar Awards and all these different venues, then you do have you have your choir directors, your church choirs, but we're split. You got the ones that are big and popular, and then you have those of us who are doing the everyday work. And we may not be out in the limelight right now, but we do we do the job, and we're faithful, and we're diligent in what we do. This show is for you to encourage you and let you know to continue doing what you're doing. You know, you can't you have to look at it as a ministry. It's not something that we're going to try to build the world, but it's a ministry, something that we have to do. And I was thinking you have to flip the script, not look at it so negatively. We impact a lot of people in this, in, in our, in our worlds, whether you're in a big church or a little church, we all impact people. We see them when they're sad. We see them when they're happy. We see them when they're excited about the birth of a child. We, we always, the installation services for anything that's going on in a church, we're always there. And so we need to understand, I always think knowledge is power and information is how you get it. And a lot of times we can't do the job that we would really want to do because we don't have all the information that's needed in order to do the job. So that's what this show is all about, is just to give you an idea of what's behind the music and how it impacts our thinking, how we uh, adapt ourselves to it, how we receive it. All of that comes into play. It doesn't matter what genre, genre you're in. It could be hip hop, it could be whatever it is, classical music, uh, Caribbean music, whatever it is. There is an impact that it has on you. And there's a there's a psychology or a, um, a, a pathway that people use in order to get music in, into you in order to make you do certain things. Now, what is music psychology. A lot of people may think that it's not a, a discipline, but yes, it is. It comes under music therapy. Those of us who majored in music, I'm in the process. I left my music psychology book at home. It's very thick. You know, if you're not dedicated, you won't get through it because it's like uh, a thousand pages and there are no pictures. So <laughs> you really have to like really make yourself read this book. It's not anything like that. But um, 
those of us who, like I said, who are music majors, they have had a course or they had some kind of dealing with music psychology and those who are majoring in music therapy, they have a more in-depth study of uh, music psychology in the study affects people, how it can help them uh, get over the things that they're doing. Music really does have a healing property. And I think that if we realize that we'd be a little more selective in what we choose to sing in the presence of people. But music psychology is a study of the effects of music on our behavior or experiences. And generally you have five different reactions to that. I'm not going to make this so lectury, but you have five reactions basically to music. It is perceived in a way, it is created in a way, the way you respond to it. You know, you think when you hear a song, perce perception is when you hear a song, what is, what do you think when you hear it? You know, and, and, and it doesn't matter what type of song it is. It, it, we all have a thought process when we hear it, whether it's the beat that attracts us, whether it's the words that attract us, us or whether it's the person that's singing, the way they deliver the song. We have a perception when we first hear the song. Creation, you know, songs just do not pop. It appears that they just pop out of nowhere, but they don't. They're generally born, born out of our experiences, our troubles, our happiness, our sadness, or whatever whatever. A song is born. You take whatever your thought process is, you write it down, and then you add the musical notes to it to convey a message to somebody else. Also is how you respond to it. You can respond to it positively or negatively. It can make it can motivate you. If you ever uh, in the in your Facebook feeds, sometimes you have the gold uh, cast, I think it is, and they have a lot of um inspirational messages and the music that they attach to it kind of motivates you and make you want to get up and do do certain things uh is and also how it integrates in your life there are some people who listen to music every day like mark Dewars, and i'm sure he does uh he's a classical pianist i really enjoy him to hear him play and he gets all you know i really I'm excited for him and all of the things that are happening for him. But how are you integrated in your life? Some people uh, like myself, you have to hear music every day. It's almost like folks that drink coffee. You <laughs> you have to have music. If I go to if I go a half a day without listening to music, whether it's classical, gospel, hymn or whatever it is, I'm kind of like you know, sitting there going, oh, my God, I need I need music. You, you know, at work, I got to find earplugs, earplugs so I can listen. So there are five ways in which we respond to music and it has an effect on our behavior. Make, music can make you be at peace. It can make you fight. It depends on how they play it and what's being played, the key that is being played in different factors. And I'm going to go through that um, as we go along. But I was thinking if you really sit back and think about it, when you pick a song for your choir, and you, it may minister to you. I mentioned this to my mom today. I was talking to her and we, she was a choir director of multiple choirs before I even stepped up. I learned a lot from her and I was telling her, you can, you can have a song that ministers to you and you love it. And you, you know, it, it does all five things that it should do. And then you take it to rehearsal and you teach it to the people. And it's like, they're just like, it's like a blank. <laughs> you wondering like, wait, 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 you know, the song did something for me. Why is it not doing anything for somebody else? And then vice versa. I have had times where I taught a song that I really didn't like care for. I don't, I don't think it's any a song that I don't like. It may not be suit my fancy, but it's, you know, it doesn't matter to me. I love singing. I love uh, directing. So I will even direct a song that I may not be that drawn to, I'll put it that way, but I will still get up and do the job because I love what I do. And sometimes I can pick, give, get a song and teach it to the choir. <laughs> and, you know, to me, it's like, okay, you know, we're going to sing it. I'm not expecting a whole lot, but you know, I don't want to waste people's time if they come to rehearsal and you teach a song, you want to give it to them. Right. And for some reason, when they get up and they sing it on a Sunday morning or a Friday or whenever impromptu or whatever, the song just like, takes off. And I'm sitting there looking like that is, you know, I'm like, oh my God, I'm not really, you know, and this is the song. So, I mean, you know, is it, that has happened to all of us, especially those of, who's, of us who teach songs that has happened where, you know, you don't know how people are going to receive the song. 
And of course, every song that you play or you sing or you direct or whatever, you know, sometimes I play the instruments. I, you know, you want to see some kind of reaction out of people, hopefully favorable. But it doesn't always work the way you uh, want it to be because human mind, the psyche is just different. We all are different people. We all perceive things differently. It still amazes me. It amazes me how a, you can take 10 musicians and put them in a room and each person will hear something different. They will play it differently. They, you know, same chords. It doesn't matter if you want to go by chromatic or diatonic. They are all the same notes. <laughs> but for some reason, they all we all sound totally different. If you put me in a room with 10 musicians, I'd probably be the worst one out of all of them. That's not a downplay. Mus playing an instrument is not the highlight of my day. Should I say that? Not like it is with Mark, with Mark. But it's a beautiful thing. I mean, you know, but it's just amazing to me how we all perceive it differently. And it's based upon the experiences that we have had. And I was thinking with people, you know, the average person, we don't think about um, think in terms of the technical terms. You know, most folks think in, think in just regular daily terminology. But in watching people when I'm sitting there and, you know, what monitoring the service or whatever, I notice that generally you get about five responses from people. Sometimes you get folks that cry. Some people get angry at a song. Some people are happy. Some people are indifferent. And then you even got those people who fall asleep. You know, you just kind of like, really? you? I, I'm doing all this and you policy. So you get all kinds of reactions from people. So you have to remember that you're doing this as a ministry is not really for a popularity contest. I mean, even though we, you want to be received and accepted for what um, you do, but not necessarily is going to happen that way. But um, back to my point, there are several factors that kind of affect how we perceive music. And one of them is our life experiences. They influence how and what songs we pick, what we sing. And I was thinking is like those of us in my group, we tend to gravitate to the hymns and the choirs. You know, those of us who were like in the choirs in the, in the eighties and the nineties, we were in the choir. We tend to gravitate to hymns and to the choir. So then when we have our moments, we go to the hymns. And, you know, you think about the show that I had what, about two weeks ago, I had a hymnathon, and that the group that it uh, penetrated, I mean, that video had like 6.5 thousand views. <laughs> and I was just like, wow, you know, people think hymns are dead and people are not listening. Well, that was a farce. Cause I mean, when I, did that show. I had no idea it would be received that well. And we do have another one coming. I don't know when, but we're going to have another Himathon part two coming. But I mean, for us, we just like gravitated to it. Those who were born in that season, they tend to go more with the praise and worship and with the CCM. The closer you come to 2000, 2010, they're more graphed, they're more uh, drawn to, um, praise and worship and CCM. And so that's what I'm saying. Your life experiences, people, when we grew up, they were, it was like a mandate for us to know the hymns, to know all of the various genres of songs. That was like a mandate. You, you, you were just, this is what you must do. Whereas now it's a little bit different. Everything is, um, everything is a little bit, uh, more open and more celebrate, you know, celebratory or whatever. And I, Ours was more like in the line or what uh, with the message. We focus more on the message. I'm not saying that they don't do that today. I'm not saying that. But for us, it was more about the words and what was being sung at that time. Um, and also the keys that we sing songs in have an impact on what we do or how it's perceived by people. I was thinking uh, anybody that's ever been to Las Vegas. And yes, I've been there. And no, I didn't do the casino thing. I'm not into that. There's more to do in Las Vegas than pulling the one arm bandit, as my father says. But, you know, as immediately once you get off the plane, you're inundated with the the, the machines. You can't help it. When you get off of the um, plane and you come into the open area, the airport, that's all you hear. But I was 
I noticed that in some of them now they've changed it, but generally the machines, the slot machines are playing in the key of C, C major. They are C, what is it? C E G. They play in the C, they used to, I don't know what they're doing now. I heard that they don't do that. Now I haven't been there so long. I haven't heard one in so long, so it may have changed. I don't know. But at that time they paid it in that key because that's considered a happy key. And as the notes go up, it makes you more energized and you focus more. You don't realize, but that music is getting in there in your psyche and it's making you pull that arm because it gives you happy music it releases endorphins. And it, happy people just do a lot of different things that they normally probably wouldn't do. But because you're happy, you just might jump on that roller coaster or you just might do that bungee jump or you just might uh, play that game. You just might do some. Then, you know, because you're happy and that's what they do. And the more happier you are, that music is there to inspire you to keep doing what you're doing, keep shelling it out. And, you know, you think you say, you know, some people I was talking to some people and they were saying, no, I don't really pay attention to it. I'm like, yes, you do. When you're watching a TV show, you know that the scene is about to change because you hear the music. They change it. And then, you know, they're going from one scene to another. The people who write the music for those shows, they understand that, that they want you to pay attention and know what's going on. They may not say, they're not going to stand there and say, act two, scene one. They're not going to do that. The music tells you that, that they're getting ready to change. Law and order. We hear that thunk that they always do. We know that sound when you hear that, whatever it is, dun -dun, you know, that's law and order. I don't care which one it is. CSI, what is, no, is, uh, the original Law and Order, you got specials, you got so many of them, I don't know, trial by jury, I don't know. But when you hear those, you automatically know that's Law and Order. And then when they're doing a scene, when the music becomes serene, you know either they get ready to find somebody in a, in a, in, on the worst day of their life, or you're getting ready, to, the truth is about to be revealed. Somebody's about to confess to the crime, okay? <laughs> So you, music impacts you. You can sit there about the commercials that we hear, the jingles that they have. I remember um, when I was young, when I was a teenager, they had the Empire commercial. Some of you out there remember that, um, where it says, well, um, it was a 588, 2300 Empire. It, it doesn't matter where you were in the house, where you were in the street. I don't care what city you were in, what country you in. When you heard that, you know they were talking about this man with these big glasses on and he lays down flooring and carpet and he might do some window dressing, <laughs> you know. So that music, they do that. And I was thinking they I was I had a chance to talk to some people that um, do the commercials so like McDonald's. And they were like, that is what they sit around and do. They make sure that music captivates you, you know, whatever. I, one of the slogans, any other slogan, I can't really think of the slogan right now, but it captivates you so that it gets in your psyche and you remember. And if it's a good um, jingle then you're going to react every time you hear, you're going to go, Hey, you know, you're going to get that body action moving. And if they're talking about shelters and you know, the animals need a home, then it's going to make you more melancholy and more sad. I mean, it's, and either way it goes, whether the song makes you happy, they want the purpose is to get a reaction out of you to get it in your psyche that you always remember. And I know I'm getting kind of technical, but I'm getting to the other side. Trust me, we're going to cross over Jordan River and get to the other side. But they do that purposely because they want you to remember so that when you walk outside your house and you're hungry, you think about McDonald's or you think about whatever eating place, Papa John's, or you think about Giordano, well, whoever it is. They are the first thing that comes to your mind because that's how we are. Whatever we buy, we go to Walmart because they keep, if, if they don't advertise and if one of you go to a restaurant, if you don't tell somebody else about the restaurant, I won't know anything about it. Right. I, I mean, I won't know, but if they put the commercial in front of me and keep telling me that this Porsche is, is the best car in the world. Well, guess what? After a while, I'm going to start believing that's the best car in the world. And then what? I'm going to save my nickels, dimes and quarters. And I'm going to try to get that car because that's what I think. Um, let me go back and uh, 
and read some of these comments. I want to do a couple of shout outs. Let me get this, get to this. Um, I did Deatrice Raphael. Um, and that says, uh, <laughs> wow, that's good to know. Slot music in the key of C. <laughs> uh, Mark, you can confirm that you and Professor John Harry, good to see you. Christopher, good to see you. Deatrice says, sometimes when I go to the movies, I remember the score and not more than the movie. And that's true. That's what they do. You remember. And that's why they people get awards, Tony Awards, Grammy Awards for the musical score, because that's what makes the movie. Anybody seen that movie, Gladiator? The music alone, especially when he, it starts and Caesar, he's out there, he's on, he's um, getting ready to go into battle. I remember this because I love the music. It's, it's very majestic. And, and he te he's telling them to hold the line. They're fighting a war. He's telling them, hold the line, hold the line. And the music just goes along with the horses galloping and everything. And it just captivates you. That part captivates me every time I watch it. And I think I've watched that movie 20 times. But it's the music that captivates you. So that's a very good point, Deatrice. It really does. And that's what a lot of, and psychologists know that. I know Annette is watching, but psychologists know that. <laughs> and they use that to get you to do. And like I mentioned, um, I think last year sometime, I was able to watch a video of music therapy uh, where an older gentleman was confined to his wheelchair. And what they did was they got the music that he was accustomed to listening, just like I list, we listen to hymns and whatever. They got the music that he was accustomed to. And it was amazing. After him listening to that for two hours, he actually got up and started walking like nothing was ever wrong with him. He identified with that music. That was what was in his spirit. And that's what he identified with. And he became he got up and started moving around. He started with the walker about the end of the couple of hours or so. He was up walking like nothing was ever wrong. So music is impactful. And that's why my all of that I said <laughs> was to get you to the point to realize that the music that you select for your choir to sing is very important. It, don't take it lightly and say, oh, well, we just going to get up and sing this song. It really doesn't matter. No, it really does, because somebody out there may need it. And I was thinking not long ago, uh, one of my friends, their mom passed and they called me and they said they wanted me to be over the music for her service. Well, you know, I'm I had hoped to be sitting in the audience, <laughs> you know, kind of like getting myself together. But then they said, no, we need you to do this. And, you know, and this is what I'm telling you. You have to be in tune with what's going on and the and think about the best way music it, 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 i had to perceive what was going on in the service create an environment in the music because the choir is just following and the musicians whatever you say that's what we're doing because we don't know what's going on okay so it, it was all on me to come up with a plan they gave me two songs and you come up with the rest but in in singing this song, they gave me one, but then I also understand people. When you're in a service that, of that type, a homegoing service, everybody is not in the choir for the right reason. So you got a mixed multitude. You got those who really, really sing, who are there because they want to sing. You got those who like to sing. I'm singing because you told me that I had to be here. And then you got those who can't find a seat in the audience. So the best place is in the choir stand. Yeah, we have those too. I know <laughs> you, you You see this big mass choir, unless they shut it down, you got people in the choir because I can't find another seat. So I'm going to sing in the choir today. Anyway, the, the song that they requested to sing coming in, knowing the burden that they were carrying, for me to sing it at the tempo and I got a mixed congregation of people. I realized that that was not the right thing to do. Sing that song. But I had to get the tempo, have a more upbeat tempo, tempo to the song. So they wouldn't focus so much on what's ahead of them. I knew that the, that the music would minister to them. And they're all musicians. So if I keep it kind of upbeat, it'll help them get through the service and be able to at least have some kind of composure. And then because the family is of a mixed, you know, they got young and old. I knew to take that song and then I put a hymn in there. It went on the same upbeat, just flowed right into the hymn. So that ministered to the older generation. And then I ended with strength. 
which ministered to the younger people. So but they were all on the same beat. So they really is like almost they didn't really realize what I was doing until the whole song was over. And they were like, oh, my gosh, she just blended all these different songs together. It impacts people when you understand how it works, what is going on, how it works, when you should do whatever you do, how to do it. And you will be surprised of the outcome. And that's what I try to help people understand that it requires study. You know, I mean, we see the le- we see the ending result, all of this. Everybody likes to do that. But to understand, to get the depth and the understanding that you need, you have to study. And work at what you're doing. Um, and I was also thinking that um, even in our choir. Now, let me get over to the choir because I'm sure you all probably like, OK, she, she's she deep on the technical stuff. Let's take it over to the choir. Now, when we think about the, the congregational songs and the choir songs we sing. We basically sing that most of them the same key. You got C sharp. You got the key of C. You got the A flat. You got the key of G and you got the key of um, B flat. Yeah, I think basically they're somewhere around in those in those keys, because those are kind of considered the happy keys, especially when you take it major. You can flatten a couple of thirds in there, but basically you want to keep it major. And those that those songs kind of like are the ones that go over and they kind of like jumpy, happy or whatever, because you want to you want to inspire people to be happy, not in a false way, like, you know, as they say, pink clouding. But you want you have to give people hope. And I think that's one of the main things that music is supposed to do is give people hope. And when you select songs for your choir or for your praise team or whatever you're doing, select a song, follow the spirit, but select a song that will give people hope, that will remind people of the hope. Even though all of this is going around me, I can still be at peace knowing that everything is going to work out to my favor. All right. So we want, and and one thing directors, let me just throw this in here. Don't change the keys for your choir. You know, sometimes I, I know one choir that, director does that. If the song is in A flat, she's going to bring it all the way down to maybe D or E so that the choir is comfortable singing. Don't do that. Let the song, teach them to sing the song in the key in which the original song is. They can't grow and do better if you, if you keep adjusting and, you know, make them, help them to strive to do better. But on my last points, yes, my last points, you all been kind of quiet today, but my last points, um, The benefits of music is that it lifts the mood. It lifts your mood. You know that. If you're not, you get up and you're not feeling that great. If you put on one of your favorite songs, you're going to do better. (laughs) You're going to feel better. One of those energetic songs that get you up and moving. You know, it's when we exercise, we don't exercise the slow music (laughs) because you, most of us don't want to be on the treadmill anyway. We don't want to do this anyway. So then you have to pick music that is like upbeat to get you, (laughs) to get you moving. Um, music also relieves the stress. You know, sometimes when things are going on and, 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 and there's a whole lot going on in the world, we, we've, we've encountered so much death and sadness lately. And I kind of pulled back from Facebook a little bit because it just, it was getting to be a little bit much for me. So then I started listening to music, um, that, that, that is just happy. I have always been one of those people. I don't really like slow, sad songs, you know, for Elise. I'm sorry, Mark. I just can't do that. <laughs> that song is too sad for me. I cannot. It has to be something that's just like upbeat and jumping and I'm running around. That's just me. You know, everybody is different, but it lifts the mood and it also relieves the stress of whatever you're going through. A good song will really lift your spirit. A good hymn will lift you spiritually when you're going through some things. And you have to remember that when you're when you're teaching your choir and when you're around, you have to be inspired before you can teach them. So you have to get into your word, get into the music, get in and lift yourself first before you go to the people. Because if you are already down, you can't, you know, most of the time they're coming in at a lower level than you. And remember, I told you that you only get back what you put in there. Um, it boosts your immunity because happy people don't get sick a whole lot. Seriously, happy, happy people don't get sick because when you're happy, your body is functioning the way that it should be. You, you're releasing everything that comes from happiness. That's what you release. And I know people say, you know, you release it in the atmosphere here and all of that. Okay. Yeah. But anyway, when, it, when you're happy, 
and you're, you know, you're going on and you got a piece in your heart and you got a good song going on, your body, it helps your body to amend and to build up the antibody so that it's able to fight off whatever germs or whatever that's coming along. And also in the spiritual world, it's the same thing. You know, the word and spirit psalms and spiritual songs help boost your immunity spiritually so we don't get caught up in a lot of stuff. That's a whole nother message over there. And it aids in bonding it it you know the, one of my greatest things is when i'm teach is when i um have a congregation and we're the choir singing and then i involve the whole the entire congregation i have everybody singing you know from the the pulpit all the way to the ushers in the back everybody is singing you know because a lot of people i've always heard i heard um reverend timothy wright say um, and Reverend Milton Bingham, when they were, um, do, I think it was Georgia Mass they were singing with, but he was saying he turned around and he called the um, called out the audience, you know, sopranos, alto, tenor. And he said a lot of times the best singers are in the audience. And I love it because it makes everyone together. That is the most beautiful thing, because I let them know it is it, it, not about perfection. It's about making a joyful noise. So a lot of them will. You know, I call the sopranos out and I call the altos out. And then I call the tenors out and have the whole church just rock and sing it. it does, I'm not looking for perfect notes. I'm looking for participation. And that is the most beautiful spirit to see everybody singing together. The old, the young, the babies, the teenagers, everybody engaged. And that's what music does. Music is a universal language that brings everybody together. And it, it it brings everybody to one accord. Music can motivate all of us to love and appreciate one another, which, you know, we see that in the timelines now. Everybody's telling us that we should love and appreciate one another. That's what we should do. We should do that anyway. Even before tragedy happens, we should love and, and treat each other right. But music invokes that. Music can invoke you. It can encourage you to do wrong. Music can encourage you to do things that are good, right. It, it really inspires you. It, it really inspires you. And I think if we think of it in that way, then we will do a better job <laughs> in what we do. Music really heals you on the inside. It is. It was created by God. It wasn't created by man. Man, we just take things and we twist it and use it to our advantage. But God created music as a beautiful thing. He created it. So it's, it's always anything that God creates is always good. It's always used to be beneficial. And sometimes it's up to us how we perceive it, what we take, the ideas that he give us, what we do and create, what the music we create, and then how we respond to what we're doing and what we expect other people to do when they hear it. You know, and, and I always think, I always say that whatever we do that is from the heart is going to reach the heart of the people. And if you do that, if you take those different things into consideration, you'd be surprised how much better and how the delivery would be. You know, nobody wants to do anything and there's no good delivery. You know, you want to hack people in a positive way. Um, Deatrice says, I love that I, she loves him. Actually, I do too. Mark Doris, I guess he, you're saying you understand in regards to me talking about fur at least. I, I just can't do that song. Uh, Deatra says music is healing. Yes, it does. My mom says, yes, it does. It'll lift your spirit and bless your soul. Absolutely. You know, and I, it, 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 I love music. I've always loved it from a child. And, you know, sometimes, you know, there, there's the study of it and then there's the performance side of it. I don't like really like to call it performance, you know, because it sounds like you're just doing something. But for me, music is really ministry. Being a choir director is one of my most favorite things I have always done all my life. I've been doing this since I was five years old. So it's a part of me. I've studied it under different people, under different professors and teachers and participated in so many different things because I enjoy it. And the, the I love using my gift to bless other people, which is part. This is the other part of it. Teaching, <laughs> teaching music. And I know everybody's kind of like, I don't really need to know that. But you'd be surprised. The more information and the more um, knowledge you receive and information is how you get it. But the more knowledge you receive, the better you will be at whatever it is. 
You can't become stagnant and say, oh, well, all I need to do is this. You should have a vision of, for yourself and for your department where you want to be. You know, not just be settled settled in the four walls, but to be able to inspire somebody else outside. Use that gift for ministry. Use that gift to evangelize. Use that gift to inspire. I remember one young man said he and he wants to inspire before he expires. You want to be an inspiration to somebody. And if God gave you the gift of music, you should study your craft, study it, learn all about it so that you will be able to speak on it with fervor and with confidence and with the ability to convey that message to other people so that they catch on to the excitement and do better. Um, and, and that says, and you do it with excellence. Thank you so very much. I do. I love it very much. And that's kind of why I started this is because I want to inspire people to do better. Don't be satisfied with mediocrity. You know, there is a process, there is a psychology behind what you do. And I use that in learning it. I'm in the course of study, um, working towards my degree and you, it's amazing how, impactful and how powerful music is. And I think when we understand what we do and how powerful it is, we won't look at it simply as performance, but we'll look at it as a ministry, as something that God gave us to give to somebody else. All right. So I'm hoping that there was something said to help you. I know this was kind of a deep, so <laughs> a deep subject because this is like, I don't want to be in a lecture hall. No, but you know, it's just some things that we need to understand. And, and as you understand, and as you grow in your ministry, then the better you will be, the more, the better you will become and the more that you will do. And you'll be surprised. It's a very gratifying feeling when you begin to study and dedicate yourself to learning and to the course of study of music or whatever your genre, whatever you're doing. And then to see your own self, that's encouraging when you see your own self develop and become better at what you're doing. So actually, everybody, that's all I got for you on tonight. I hope you enjoyed everything that I said. Shout out to Ella Kevin McGee. I just saw him and Tori. I saw you. Thank you for tuning in. Daryl Dickinson. Thank you for tuning in. Michelle Cox. Thank you. Arthur. Thank you so very much for tuning in and then I, for not leaving me out here by myself. It is a wonderful thing. I hope each and every one of you have a lovely evening and the rest of the week. And we'll be back on next week. We'll be talking about vocals. Yes. Tuning that voice up. I see. Oh God. I can't. Okay. I don't want to get started on it, but I'm just going to try to give you some vocal tips, some new ones that I learned. Uh, Cause I hear too many choirs screaming because the mu music, is out, but they're screaming and screaming is not the right thing to do with this beautiful piece of beautiful instrument that God created. Love you all. Thank you for tuning in with me. It's been the best. Thank you. Peace to everybody. Love, peace, and soul. Bye. Come on, put your hands up. Come on, we just want to let you know today. The tide has the whole world.